Hello and welcome to another episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to answer the question of how to create a photo slideshow for your website using Adobe Muse. As you know, Adobe Muse is part of the Creative Cloud as well as available as a separate subscription for creating websites without having to write code. And one of its built-in abilities, especially for photographers or anyone in general, is the ability to create photographic slideshows. Let's take a look. So I've got a Muse site built here, and I've got some pages that were just simply added by hitting the plus sign. And once I, um, uh, of course, the page, the pages themselves have uh, master items on them. So that includes the background graphic and the navigation from the master page. So I'm going to double click on this past seasons um, page here. And although uh, the slideshow I'm going to build has really nothing to do with past seasons, I'm going to show you the process. So the first thing is that, um, of course, you have to have a page to put the slideshow on. I would also recommend that you figure out uh, the size of your photos. And, and Muse will do all this for you, but it's probably better that you determine what your you know biggest size will be. And more importantly that you go into Photoshop and use the Save for Web feature to downsize those images to that size. Now I'm saying this as a best practice. Muse will do all that for you. So you can take your full resolution JPEG images, drop them right in Muse, right in your slideshow, and Muse will downsample them. But nothing downsamples them better or you know, with the best quality than your own eye using Photoshop to do it with Save for Web. So again, best practice, take it for what it's worth, if you don't do that, Muse will do it for you, but I highly recommend you do it yourself. Okay, so with that out of the way, I have a folder of images on my hard drive that I want to use in my slideshow that I've downsized and got to the right web size with Photoshop. And now I come over to this uh, widgets library here in Muse, and the widgets library is where you get all the cool stuff to put on your page without having to write the code for it. So of course there's a slideshows category. Now, I'm going to let you in on a little secret about the slideshows. They're all the same. <laughs> it is a slideshow. What you're starting off with here and what Muse is helping you with is the options for that slideshow. So, for example, there's a basic slideshow. Here, if I drag that out, that gives me a basic slideshow with a big image, uh, a text description for each image, the count for the image, and the navigation. And here, I'll delete that, and then we'll go to the next one. The blank one is kind of the same thing. It just doesn't have any preloaded images in it. And I want to thank the Muse team for that. That was probably one of my gripes that I, I want to start fresh with no images. Okay, so what are the other two? Well, Lightbox, when we drag that one onto the page, this one is kind of cool where it dims the rest of the page when you're looking at an image, but you don't necessarily start off with an image. So here, let me go to preview and show it to you. So when I go to preview for this particular page, I see the thumbnails and I see the rest of the page. But as soon as I click on an image, I see that image highlighted with the rest of the page dimmed. That's what a light box is. So I click out of it, click on the next image. And this is great when you're not necessarily trying to do a slideshow per se, but maybe you've got some products that you want to focus on or let people click on and that be the focus. And then when they click off of it, they're out of the uh, light box. And of course, you can still navigate while you're in the light box if you use the navigation here. And when you click out, you're out. So that's a cool kind of thing for not necessarily a photo slideshow, but just having products on your page in general. So here, let's go back to the design view. And let's get rid of that uh, light box. And the last one is thumbnails. And when I drag that out, uh, well, obviously it gives me thumbnails for the images and, of course, the big image. And if I preview this here, let's move it over a little bit. If I preview this page now, it basically gives me the ability to click on any given thumbnail to jump right to that image. And, of course, I can use the navigation. I get the count. I get the um, the description for the image, and this particular one is set to autoplay, so even if I don't do anything, the images will just go by, but if I want to jump to any particular image, I can. So all of that is to say that every single thing I just talked about, no matter which one you start with, you can turn those options on or off in the options. So for example, 
If I want it uh, to have the thumbnails or not, I can turn the thumbnails on or off. And now I'm back to a basic slideshow with no thumbnails. If I don't want the counter, if I don't want the captions, I can turn those on or off as well. If I want a light box, I get a light box now. So it doesn't really matter which one you choose because you have all of the options available to you no matter what. Again, Muse is just giving you those four choices uh, or as a starting point. So if you know, for example, I know I want to start with a blank one, I can start with a blank one without having to manually go and delete the images. And then I can set up whatever options I want. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to click out of the options. I'm going to delete the one off the page that I put there. And I'm going to go ahead and start with the one that I usually start with, which is the blank one. Now, again, uh, you are going to determine based on this, this frame here, I just clicked into it, what size your images are going to be. So you can uh, set that up first and then go make all your images that size or if, in Photoshop, or if you don't want to do that, you can just set it up. When you load the images in, um, Muse will size them to that size anyway. But I, again, I prefer the uh, Photoshop optimization uh, over the Muse optimization. Okay, so now that I've got my blank slideshow, how do I get my images in? We well, can do it one of two ways. You can go to File and Place, and you can go find your images and select multiple images and place them in. Or the easier way probably is just to use the little flyout menu here and say Add Images. And that will do the same thing. It'll take you to your hard drive. You can go find the images you want. So I'm going to grab the first few images here, let's say down to 1994. These were from my uh, CS6 tour stop in Santiago. And I'm going to go ahead and select those images, and those images will all start to load in. So they've loaded in now, eight images have loaded in, and I can now start to configure my options. So for example, I know I don't want a counter. I don't really care about you know knowing the number of images there. I also um, don't really care any, about any captions. I don't have any captions in the metadata to pull from anyway. So let's just go ahead and go with that. So I have a simple navigation. I have it set to do a fade. I have it set to do an autoplay by default. It will fit the content proportionally to the size of the frame. This is Muse doing the scaling for me. And of course, um, the thumbnails, if I were using thumbnails, to fill those proportionally as well. So now if I click out of this and press my preview button here, I can preview my slideshow. And again, if I don't do anything, it should just autoplay. And it's working. Okay, great. I forgot I had those two images in there. Okay, so now that's a good example. Let's say I wanted to take out one of those extra images. I had a duplicate there. So let's go back to design view. And the easiest way to do it, I could, I guess, navigate to it and find it that way. But I like to do it this way. I like to actually just go in and temporarily show my thumbnails, even though this slideshow won't actually have thumbnails. Find that photo I don't want, click on it, and delete it. So that way I can you know, visually quickly grab the thumbnail I want, see the full image, and then when I'm done, I can just simply turn off thumbnails. Now the other thing I noticed is that when the image didn't fill up the frame, we got this kind of dark gray behind it. So if I click one more time, click, click, into the actual frame, I can say that I, I, I don't want this frame filled with a color. Just make it transparent. That way, my uh, images, when they don't fill the frame, I won't see this kind of border on the top and bottom or this letter boxing or pillow boxing uh, around the images. So now, if we preview this, we should have the one less image. We shouldn't have the you know extra gray around the image when it doesn't fill the frame. And that's great because some of these images are different proportions, different sizes. And that's working. It's doing exactly what I wanted to do. So that's how easy it is to do a slideshow in Muse. Now I'm going to give you one extra tip. Let's go back to design. And uh, I'm going to change two things here. First thing I'm going to change is I'm going to go to this. And I'm going to choose that I want, instead of a transition of a fade, I want a horizontal swipe. In other words, I want the images to go by horizontally. And if I do that, uh, here, I'll preview it just to show you what that looks like. Just going to swipe from uh, probably left to right or right to left. There we go. It just swipes to the next image inside the frame. 
But if we trick it, or we can you know, use this little tip here, if I select the actual frame that contains the images, and I make that frame wider. Now, it's, of course, it's affecting the size of the image right now. We're gonna, we're gonna change that. And I'm gonna zoom out. So I'm just pressing Command minus on my Mac keyboard or Control minus on your Windows keyboard to zoom the page out so I can basically extend the slideshow off the page. And I'll show you what that's gonna do in just a moment here. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit more just so I can see my handles and zoom way out and position that where I want it to be. Okay, so now we'll zoom in. Now, of course, I don't like what it's doing to the actual image, it's trying to fill the frame with that. So I'm just gonna right click on the actual frame and say fitting. I'm gonna go back to fit content proportionally. In other words, show me the entire image in this new long rectangle. Okay, so now that I've got that, what happens when we preview, since I've extended the frame so far off the page, it looks like our images are swiping in from off the page. So it's just a cool little tip uh, that you can use for your slideshows to give it kind of a more dynamic look on your pages. So once you're done loading your images, you can always, of course, add more images uh, just by getting to the controls, which I've got way out here. So if I wanna add some more of those images, I can do that. Here we can grab some more here and it will add them in. And of course, if I want to rearrange the images, that's another thing a photographer is probably going to want to do. I can select it, go to my thumbnails. Once I see my thumbnails, we'll zoom in a little bit here. You can click and move around your images in the order you want them in. So if I wanted to start with this create image or perhaps this create now image, I just move that in front and I can rearrange the order of my slideshow just by dragging the images in the order I want them in. So that's how a photographer or anyone else would rearrange the order of the images. And again, once I turn off thumbnails, those go away. And if we preview now, it should start with that create now image, which it did, go to the next create image, which it did, and then it just keeps going in the order that I put the slides in. So that is how you'd create a photo slideshow in Muse, whether you're a photographer or not. It's just that easy. And again, I prefer to do the downsampling in Photoshop, but that's up to you. And uh, once you're done, you can either publish the site using Business Catalyst. If you're a Creative Cloud member, you get up to five websites you can host. If not, you can just simply file export out the HTML and you can even make it part of a larger site that you already have using something like Dreamweaver and FTP in it to whatever service or host you want to use. And before I go, I want to give a special shout out to the students over at CC Tech. Thanks for following my podcast. That's it for this week's episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. My name is Terry White. Thanks for watching.